Throughout the world, human skeletons of gigantic size have been found. One such set of bones was unearthed in Castelnau, France, by Georges de la Pouge in 1890. The three bones, including a tibia, were so large that de la Pouge concluded that they belonged to a person who stood 11 feet 6 inches tall. He published his findings in the journal La Nature, saying that though they were enormous, they were undoubtedly human. But was this just a stray incident? Not really, because in 1894, newspapers spoke about a discovery just 5 kilometers from Castelnau of giant skulls 28, 31 and 32 inches in circumference. They estimated that they belonged to humans that were between 10 to 15 feet in height. Legends of giants are found everywhere on earth. For example, this enormous footprint set in solid stone is from India and is believed to be Bhima's footprint. So who was Bhima? He was one of the five Pandava brothers from the Indian epic Mahabharata and he was significantly taller and stronger than his brothers. The footprint measures 2.5 feet in length and based on this people say that Bhima must have been a whopping 18 feet tall. Though it's unlikely to be Bhima's footprint and may just be a carving, it does illustrate how universal giant myths are and the Indian epics are full of stories of giants. There's much much more to Bhima's story and it's about to take a strange turn but first Let's look at the epicenter of giant skeletons, North America. The Hopi, the Zuni, the Yupik and all Native American tribes have fascinating stories of giants. Some of these giants were friendly and even helpful, but most were cannibals. Their terrifying legends of giants so tall they could swoop a human into their fist and put them into a sack, just like how we gather fruits to eat. The folklore describes these giants as being more than 20 feet tall. But could these giant myths be based on reality? Did these giants leave any evidence of their existence? The truth is this. Thousands of giant skeletons have been uncovered under the mounds that lie throughout America. And right up till the early 20th century, newspapers provided detailed reports of these discoveries. Here's one such report from the Yorksville Enquirer dated 1906. It reads, Gigantic skeletons of prehistoric Indians nearly 8 feet tall have been discovered along the banks of Chop Tank River. It also says that 8 skeletons were found. Later on it reads, There have been other discoveries in Maryland of remains of men of tremendous stature. A skeleton discovered at Ocean City several years ago measured over 7 feet 6 inches tall. And this report from the New York Times dated August 10, 1880 talks about two very tall skeletons. It says they measured 11 feet 3 inches tall. And this 1925 article talks about a skull that's one-fourth larger than that of modern man together with bones indicating a probable height of not less than 7 feet. Don't miss an important part of this report that's in the last paragraph where it says the specimens are being prepared for shipment to the Smithsonian Institute. This is a repeating pattern and the Smithsonian is actively engaged in procuring all the giant remains they could lay their hands on. Another article talks about more than a hundred skeletons of giant size. J. H. Porter has a farm near Northeast. Early this week, some workmen in Mr. Porter's employ came up to the entrance of a cave and found heaps of human bones within. Later on, the article says that around 150 skeletons of powerful proportions were found and it reads, scientists who exhumed the skeletons and made careful measurements of the bones say that the remains of a race of gigantic creatures compared with which our tallest men would appear as pygmies. Many of these giant remains were taken by the Smithsonian after which they were never seen or heard of again. Unfortunately, a few of these giant skeletons on public display were hoaxes and set up by convent just to make money out of public curiosity. But this does not mean all of these findings were hoaxes. Because even though there are more than a thousand newspaper reports of giant skeleton discoveries, skeptics think all these reports are just one gigantic hoax. If that were the case, it would amount to the world's longest running hoax as there are reports from nearly 400 years earlier that talk about giants. The 1550s were a time of active exploration by Europeans, many of whom sailed to the newly discovered Americas and chronicled what they witnessed and heard from the natives. And some of these narratives mentioned giant and giant skeletons. For example, Sierra de Leon was a Spanish conquistador and explorer who traveled throughout Peru in 1548 and wrote a book called Chronicles of Peru. In it he writes, There are, however, 
reports concerning giants in Peru who landed on the coast at the point of Santa Elena. The natives relate the following tradition received from their ancestors from very remote times. They arrive on the coast in boats made of reeds, a party of men of such size that, from the knee downwards, their height was as great as the entire height of an ordinary man, though he might be of good stature. Their eyes were as large as small plates. They were dressed in the skins of animals, others only in the dress which nature gave them, and they had no women with them. When they arrived at this point, they made a sort of village, and even now the sides of their houses are pointed out. But as they found no water, they made some very deep wells. These giants consumed all the provisions they could lay their hands upon in the surrounding country, insomuch that just one of them ate more meat than 50 of the natives of the country could. This is what they say concerning these giants, and we believe the account because here they have found, and still find, enormous bones. I've heard from Spaniards who have seen part of a double tooth that they catch the whole tooth would have weighed more than half a butcher's pound. They have also seen a large shin bone. These men are witnesses to the story and the site of the village may still be seen and the wells made by the giants. Later he mentions that In this year 1550 I heard that they found certain bones of men even larger than these giants. I've also heard that previously they discovered in a most ancient tomb in the city of Mexico certain bones of giants. From all this we may gather that as so many persons saw and affirmed these things, these giants really did exist. Another Spanish chronicler was the Jesuit missionary Pablo Jose Arriaga, whose 1620 book, The Extirpation of Idolatry in Peru, mentions this incident. The natives took us to the other side of the village, where a very large cave was, and in it were many dead gentiles, and among them three bodies of giants with deformed heads dressed in kumbi, but rotted with time. These giants are the progenitors of all these people, whom they worshipped and revered. There were many traces of sacrifices. The Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan is famous for being the first man to circumnavigate the globe. During this expedition, which began in 1519, Magellan came upon land that he christened Patagonia. One day, he observed there a man of giant stature, completely naked, singing and dancing on the seashore. In an effort to appear friendly, Magellan ordered one of his men to go near the giant and dance like him, which he did. The man then brought the giant to Magellan, and the giant was very surprised by their presence. And here Magellan's chronicler writes, When the giant was before us, he began to marvel and he raised one finger upward, believing that we had come from heaven. And he was so tall that the tallest of us only came up to his waist. Magellan actually abducted two of the giants to take back to Europe with him, but they died before they got there. Modern skeptics have denounced Magellan's story, saying that the giants would have been no more than six feet tall. But why would Magellan take the trouble to capture and try to bring them back to Europe if they were just six feet tall? And most importantly, why would the Library of Congress have a photo of a Patagonian man titled Ona Man, 7 feet 4 inches, showing the man of the Ona tribe? The photo is from 1897 and is from the Ona tribe that went extinct soon afterwards. Also, several other explorers have noted that the chiefs of many Native American tribes were giants. For example, in 1539, Hernando de Soto wrote about the giant chief Tuscaloosa. 300 years later, in 1834, the famous painter George Catlin painted the Osage chief Black Dog who stood 7 feet tall and weighed 300 pounds. Chief Black Dog's son was also 7 feet tall. In fact, the entire Osage tribe was was known for their tall stature. Bernal del Castillo was a Spanish soldier under Hernan Cortes and participated in numerous military campaigns against the Aztecs from 1519 to 1522. Decades later, he recounted these experiences in his book A True History of the Conquest of New Spain. It includes one incident that is noteworthy for this video. The native tribe said that their ancestors had told them that in times past they had lived among them men and women of giant size with huge bones and because they had been very bad people of evil manners they had fought with them and killed them and those of them who remained died off. So that we could see how huge and tall these people had been they brought us a leg bone of one of them which was very thick and the height of a man of ordinary stature and that was the bone from the hip to the knee. I measured myself against it and it was as tall as I am although I am a fair size.
They brought other pieces of bones like the first, but they were already eaten away and destroyed by the soil. We were all amazed at seeing these bones and felt sure that there must have been giants in this country. Our Captain Cortez told us to send that great bone to Castile so that His Majesty might see it, so we sent it there. Francisco Coronado was another Spanish explorer who led an expedition to the southwestern United States between 1540 to 1542. In his narrative, he speaks about an army captain named Melchior Diaz who traveled 700 kilometers searching for the coastline but instead stumbled upon a race of giants. Here he writes, Captain Melchior Diaz took 25 of the most efficient men. After going about 150 leagues, they came to a province of exceedingly tall and strong men, like giants. They are naked and live in large straw cabins built underground like smokehouses with only the straw roof above ground. More than 100 persons, old and young, sleep in one cabin. When they carry anything, they can take a load of more than three or four hundred weight on their heads. Once when our men wished to fetch a log for the fire and six men were unable to carry it, one of these Indians came and raised it in his arms, put it on his head and carried it very easily. Here, note that Coronado mentions that they live underground. Now coming back to the Mahabharata, the five Pandava princes and their mother Kunti have to spend 14 years in exile. One of the conditions is that they must remain in disguise so they leave their palace and live like wandering holy men. During their travels, they stay with a friendly family while hiding their royal identity from them. One morning, they wake up to find all four members of the host family, the mother, the father, the son and the daughter, in distress. It's because a giant who lives nearby holds the entire town ransom. Every year, he demands one human to eat along with a cart full of food. He first eats the food and then devours the person sent to him. So every year, one family is forced to send a family member to be eaten alive by the giant and it's this family's turn now and the reason for their anguish. Upon hearing this, Kunti orders her son Bhima to go to the giant instead of their host. Kunti does this because she considers it dharma to save the family who's given them shelter. So Bhima sets off in a chariot filled with food. Bhima leaves the village and travels for a long time till he reaches a giant's cave only to find the giant fast asleep. Bhima is fond of food and starts eating the food prepared for the giant. The giant wakes up and is furious to discover his meal eating up his meals. He charges towards Bhima with a mighty roar and though he is twice as tall as Bhima, he is no match for Bhima's strength. After a long battle, Bhima kills the giant and all's well that ends well. Eka Chakra was the name of the town where the Pandavas lived during this incident, according to the Mahabharata. So if the story is true, could the town they lived in still exist? Over 4,000 years have passed since the Mahabharata is said to have happened, which is a very long time. So today, there are four towns called Eka Chakra across India. All four towns claim to be the place where the Pandavas briefly lived. So which one is legit? Is it this Eka Chakra in West Bengal? or this one in Karnataka, or one of the other two. As you might have noticed in the previous giant stories, where there are giants, there are always caves and underground tunnels. So based on this clue, only the Eka Chakra of Maharashtra fits the bill, as it's the only one that speaks of an underground tunnel to the giants abode. People here say that Bhima left Eka Chakra, entered a cave, and traveled seven miles underground to reach the giant's lair. The place where he said to have fought with the giant is a well-known place today. This is the place with a small stream called Bhim Kund, named after Bhima. But the biggest clue is that the underground tunnel has been completely sealed. So somewhere right under this place is a tunnel system that's been deliberately blocked. So it's not just North America, the cover-up is going on throughout the world. Other clues are this building in Eka Chakra called Pandava Vada, where the Pandavas are said to have actually lived as well as a large spice grinder and other relics. It's important to make a distinction between two different types of gigantic races here. For example, have you heard of the book Solomon Island Mysteries, accounts of giants and UFOs in the Solomon Islands? In it, the author is talking about Bigfoot, not human looking giants. So some people use the term giant to mean Bigfoot too. And there's a lot of confusion about this because Bigfoot and giants share these in common. Both are linked to caves. Both are linked to underground tunnels. 
both are red hair both are gigantic and physically powerful compared to humans and both have cannibalistic tendencies but the difference is that human like giants are never seen today except for the afghanistan incident so just to clear things this video is only about human looking giants not the hairy ones bigfoot will be discussed in a future video with lots of mind blowing information including an incident from pakistan that happened 60 years ago also there's a striking parallel to the giant man eater that bhima encountered but from 7000 miles away in a completely different part of the world this story too will be covered soon stay tuned and please subscribe share and like if you found this informative thanks for watching